Hi, in this video I'm going to introduce you to interfaces. Interfaces contain definitions for a group of related functionalities that a class or struct can implement. They provide contracts that objects can use to work together without needing to know anything else about each other. Here is an example. We have a number of objects that implement the interface iPowerPlug. The interface is a binding contract. It specifies the form of the interaction, in our case, that the plug needs to have two pegs of a given shape, and the behavior that the objects need to consume power with 120 volt. All objects that implement iPowerPlug can work with any of the power outlets and the power outlets don't need to know anything about the objects except that they implement iPowerPlug. Interfaces also support plug and play where components can be exchanged easily. Again, I have an example. Here I have a user and all that the user needs to know is how to communicate with the printer, what the different options are, what the method names are, what arguments need to be passed. All this is specified in the interface iPrinter. And if the printer gets old and needs to be replaced, not a problem, we plug in a new printer, the user keeps sending the commands, the printer keeps printing. And we can keep exchanging the printer as often as necessary. We can even exchange other components like the computer from the user. As long as the device knows how to communicate with iPrinter, we can exchange the components and the documents keep getting printed. Another thing I want to point out is that interfaces can extend other interfaces. I could, for example, create an interface iColor printer that is an iPrinter. What that means is my interface iColor printer would include all the members from iPrinter and we could add additional ones. For example, a method that allows the user to print in color. Another example would be iList, which is an iCollection, which is an iEnumerable. Now I want to talk a little bit about defining interfaces. When you define an interface, you need the keyword interface. In C Sharp, interfaces may contain methods, properties, events, and indexers, but no implementation, no data. So this is different from Java. In C Sharp, we have no constants, we have no nested types either. Here is an example of the interface iEquatable. It has one single method and the method is equals. Notice here that we don't use an access modifier. Interface members are automatically public. Using an access modifier would not only be superfluous, it is not permitted, so we don't do it. Notice the uppercase i in front of equatable. In C sharp, Interface names should start with the prefix i. This identifies the type as an interface and it helps to make the code clear and easier to read. There's also another naming guideline I want to point out. Interfaces should be named with a noun phrase or an adjective that describes the behavior. I list, for example, uses a noun phrase like list I equatable uses an adjective equatable that describes that we are checking for equality. Now that we have already the focus on the interface I equatable, I want to add one more thing. Whenever you implement equals and hash code for a struct, also implement I equatable T. It reduces the need for boxing and it positively impacts the efficiency of your code.
Now let's have a look at implementing interfaces. Interfaces are like a contract. Whenever a class or a struct implements an interface, all its members have to be implemented. If a base class implements an interface, the derived class inherits the implementation. However, the base class can implement interface members by using virtual members, so they can be overwritten by derived classes. Classes can have only one base class, but they can implement multiple interfaces. C Sharp uses positional notation. Base class and interfaces are separated by commas and the base class is listed first. Here are some examples. I can have a new class that derives from a base class and an interface, or maybe just from a base class, just from an interface, maybe from multiple interfaces. And you can see already the uh, prefix i on the interface name really helps here to see right away what we are implementing and where we're inheriting from. Now let's have a look at using interfaces. One thing we can do is we can declare a variable of an interface type. Here is an example. I have a variable numbers and the type of my variable is an interface. In this case it's a generic interface iList. Sometimes we call this programming to an interface. This is a recommended practice and I want to encourage you to do that regularly. Something we cannot do is instantiate an interface directly. So if we try to create a new iList right here this would not work, it wouldn't even compile. However, we can create an instance of a class or struct that implements the interface. And that's exactly what we did already. List is a class that implements iList. So it can instantiate a new list and assign the instance of a list to my variable that is declared with a interface type. 